jessyblitz.com. So you could just introduce yourself and tell us how this came about, what voice is and what it does. Okay, my name is Falami Prehe. I am the founder and um, of Victims of Image Crime, um, which is a platform uh, I set up. It's, the, it's basically a group, it's like a support group that I set up back in 2015 kind of go get my dates right, um, when after becoming a, um, an experiencer of image-based sexual abuse, um, I decided to speak out and help other people by um, setting up that platform. the full definition of what revenge porn actually is and alongside that how it impacts someone's mental health even relationships and the long-term effects of that I don't think some people understand what can happen from revenge porn (laughs) I don't I don't actually like to use the word revenge porn because that word is very victim blaming and it's something that a few of us are few of us are campaigning to change Um, (laughs) image abuse or image based sexual abuse is more uh, it's a better definition because that's exactly what it is. Uh, you know, using um, images to cause harm and intentionally cause harm. Um, so, you know, abuse, whether it's online or offline, it's just still abuse. So that's the word we like to use. The people I support, as well as myself, long term, it could it can be quite devastating, actually. Um, I mean, to the point where, you know, I've spoken to people that want to commit suicide. And I, at the moment, I speak to men and women. I'm, I'm not partial to gender or nationality. Well, actually, UK-based, but I have spoken to people outside of the UK. Um, but um, ethnicity, none of that makes any difference to me because, for me, it's very much about the experience and the shared experience. Um, so long term, it can be quite devastating. Mental health is can be extremely um, profound. Um, I mean, speaking very much about what happened with, with my case, I very much, you know, hid away from people. You self blame yourself. You know, you believe um, that everybody knows about it. You are you feel ashamed. You feel doubtful. There is so much um, anxiety that goes with any kind of abuse. To be honest, um, much less your images have been shared. You will feel in a place where you you feel alone and you feel intimidated. You feel ashamed. You know you feel tearful. It's it's not a nice place to be, and it actually can tear families apart because there's lots of people that don't even know how to tell their families. You yeah. know how do you tell your family that? You know, um, I've had these, I've, I've had these images um, of me shared without me, my consent, and they're sexually explicit. It's quite hard, so it, it can be devastating all round. Family, friends, and you know, having a good support mechanism um, is really important. who might come from a more conservative background and perhaps this obviously happens to them and they feel quite helpless and there might be there might be some fear that they don't want to tell their family out of being shamed 
in on what do you think they could do to, you know, seek that support or even, you know, develop some sort of courage or just, you know, strength to talk to their family? Um, I think whether you come from a background that's conservative or not, I think the most important thing is communication and not to feel ashamed because very much the crime is not about whether you shared that picture consensually, it's about the sharing of the picture without your consent. Yeah. And this can happen within um, different community settings. I've spoken to people from the Asian community. I've spoken to people from the black community. And it, yeah. and I'm when I say, I'm presuming that you mean conservative in that respect, because I know very much those um, communities are very closed and they tend not to talk a lot about those kind of um, um instances um in, you know so i i very much understand where you're coming from and and i think young people of today they very much live in this online world whether you're conservative or not it is the truth and that's the way it is and i think it's trying to um educate those old school ways of thinking you know to enable them to understand from a young person's point of view and i think very much within those 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 tight-knit communities it's about having those conversations and especially different communities at the moment and then something i really really need to get into and i want to get into you know going and speaking to people within the asian community the somali community and i think very much within those 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 tight-knit communities it's about having those conversations and for, for them, especially for the elders, if they want to listen, to listen and understand because things have changed. And I get the conservative part and I get that the communities are different and they're very closed and, you know, respectable, but times have changed. And I think that's what needs to be get across. It's conversations with young people from different ethnicities, from different communities, and to listen to their views because, you know, it's, it's very much about how they are currently dating and, and and communicating and it is very much Instagram, it is Twitter, yeah. whether black or not, it is this is this is really is actually happening. So I think we kind of need to move with the times or try and you know educate as much as we can. you can't really do anything or go anywhere without seeing some sort of victim shaming especially on social media I feel like it's very prominent like and um you'll see a lot of comments like oh well they shouldn't have done that if they didn't think this would happen and I feel that's obviously very toxic and I just wanted to get your opinion on why do you think people victim shame the saddest thing is how people act online is exactly how they act offline and yeah. victim blaming and shaming happens off and offline and off. It's just, it's just, I think it's society in a whole. They all need educating. And, you know, why would, why are we so, why are we so cruel to each other? You know, an end of the day, it very, the way they um, talk about, especially sexually related crimes is like, it's the victim for, why would you have to do something in order to get the response you got? Do you know what I mean? They very much look at the victim, but not look at the perpetrator. The whole reason why we are in the situation that we are, especially when it comes to image-based sexual abuse, is because the perpetrator decided to share the image without consent. If it's consensual, then it's fine. Do you know what I mean? There's no, there's no, there's, there's no ifs or buts. But I think the whole point is, why, why would you be cruel? Why not be understanding? So I think it's about um, re-educating people and 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 explaining to people that this is the world we live in. You know, we are very much in an online world, whether we like it or not. And, we, and it, it changes, like, really, really quickly. I know. You know. And I think a lot of it is because they can. They can yeah. be cruel. There's that know? power and behind the keyboard. There, there you go. And there's no um, deterrent to not be cruel. And a lot of it needs to stem from, again, as I said, communication, talking, and changing perceptions of how people see, understand, and comment on stuff, you know, just be a bit more mindful. A lot of people 
would assume that this is more of a young person crime or like, you know, this only really happens with young, younger people at high school. Like when I was in high school, I remember this happening all the time. Honestly, it was crazy. And I just want to get your opinion on that. Do you think that this is solely because of young people and social media or is it, you know, it can happen to anyone? It can happen to anyone. It happened to me. I'm 51 this year. And this only happened like six years ago. It's it's age. The the image based sexual abuse is not gender specific. It's not age specific. It's not cultural specific. None of that applies, you know, and this is a global thing. It's not even just based in the UK. You know, this happens to people all over the world and it happens to people from different communities, the LGBT community, the black community, the Asian community, the Somali community. It is world, it's phenomenon. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Age doesn't come into it because end of the day, you know, my partner, when he did it to me, he was in his late 40s. Do you know what I mean? So age doesn't come into it. It's about the person's mind and how they think and and what they see as morally right or wrong, they are going to share an image without getting the consent of the person that they that, that they, they that's shared the image with them or taken the image with them or allowed them to take the image. Do you understand what I mean? Yeah. It doesn't come into it. It, it, it. It's not even predominantly long people. I just think it's across the board. What I think is really important is that conversations, again, I held with young people about consent, about... Um, not even about sharing images, because I've always said to people, if you want to share an image, you share the image. It's not about the sharing of the image. It's about the person who then shares that image without your consent. It's not, uh, if I want to share an image with my partner, I'll share it, but that's, that's consensual. That's not the problem. The problem is sharing the image without consent and then sharing, keep sharing, sharing, sharing. I think that's another thing that happens. So I just think that people don't understand that it's actually a crime to keep sharing the image because you don't have consent to can share, even though somebody shared it with you. Do you know what I mean? I think it's about the mindset. Stop and think. Would you like that to happen to you? And it could be as young as, as young as whoever has a phone nowadays. And I think that's the most important. Whoever has a phone, whoever's on Instagram, who has on social media, because we very much live on an online world, it's out there, it's on TV, it's in it's on it's it's everywhere, you know. So I just think it's about having those conversations is really important. and the laws are enough to support the victims especially because when doing my research I found that a lot of people they don't want to report it to the police because fear of being victim shamed or the lack of cultural sensitivity or even just the lack of emotional support it can seem like quite a cold environment so to get your opinion on do you think that more can be done you know, laws like this just pass through and then the loopholes are still there. Like the, the current revenge porn um, law, there's so many loopholes. It is just, it's not right. And they know that's why they need to look at it. Um, so there's those kind of areas that really need tightening up. There's support, all the support mechanisms that a experienced a stroke victim would reach out to within that 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 whole cycle of, support requirement i.e the doctor i.e the counselor i.e the police i.e victim support we all need to be saying the same thing we all need to be sitting around the same table and we all need to be providing support in a specific way culturally specific if needed and you know if if it's a case that okay it's happened to somebody within a different community well make sure somebody that they're with from that community make sure there is an interpreter if they need one make sure there's just cultural awareness and understanding because different cultures provide different problems do you know what I mean and it's not even problems it's just more of different um understandings you need to have a common understanding because cultural awareness is real and it exists so and I mean talking from my point of view when it happened to me I had to sit across for a, 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 a police man not a police woman but I had to 
um, convince myself and have a word with myself as to say, well, you know what, Flami, you need it's a means to an end. You need to get to the end of this process. So you kind of just need to see your way through it. But I then know that not everybody's like me and not everybody can deal with ha- this situation, how I've dealt with it. So I think, you know, there just needs to be a, a lot more training, <laughs> a lot more conversations and a lot more understanding across the board in order to make sure that what the support that is required is required across the board and it's done in a fair and equal and understanding way. Mm-hmm.